Good morning everyone from Detector Mania Day 2 in the misty Scottish borders in Berwickshire in Scotland. So also known as the Michael Hare Memorial Rally and uh, this is field number 12 and as you'll see there's virtually no one here. Um, we've got underway. Uh, a very uh, comfortable sleep last night I have to say although it was a little bit cold at times and that's us back out for the Saturday full day. We've started with field number 12 which is pasture as you can see. There's some very strange looking sheep in this field. From a distance we actually thought they were cows lying down but they're not, they're sheep. Um, as ever I should say if you're not already subscribed then please hit the button. And uh, I've done a little bit of research. There's a prehistoric monument in this site of I believe it's some sort of prehistoric fort, probably Bronze Age or Iron Age, and uh, it's quite large, covers an area about 125, 150 metres across. And there's also an annex, which I think is another 25 metres, so probably a little enclosed settlement from the three, four thousand years ago, maybe two thousand years ago. And it's also right next to a medieval fort site, which is in field eight and ten on the other side of the hedge over there. But we thought we'd start in here and then we'll give that a try. So um, let's go and see if we can find any treasures. Barely one minute in, we've got our first digger in field 12. And a pretty solid 87. So I'm going to turn you off and get back to you though. I'm not going to do a live dig on the first. The ground is very stony, that's why I didn't do a live dig on the first. But we've got it here, it's not particularly deep. And... Oh, I thought we might have had silver. It's a button. Oh, no, it's not. It's a rivet. Oh, there you go. I thought I had silver on the first hole, but it's a little pop rivet. Aquil. Is it silver on the second, or is it another pop rivet? And it's another pop rivet. <laughs> oh, well, at least we're tidying up the field. Here are the sheep that I mentioned. Can't say I've ever seen this breed before. And these are actually sort of middle-sized ones. There's some giant ones in the field next door. And as we walked up, we thought they were cows. Well, I thought they were cows. There you go. So, little uh, Scottish border sheep. There's Marty. There's Sneaky Pete. Not much in the way of finds in that last field. Martin got a couple of buttons in field 12. And... Uh, well, I got a couple of rivets and a few lumps of lead, and that was it. So this is field number eight. Apparently this was the site of a medieval fort back sometime around about a thousand years ago. Um, so fingers crossed. Look at that for a view though. It is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Hopefully we might even see a little bit of sunshine. First digger from this field. It's a bit jumpy. 88 up to 91. Doesn't sound like a small target either. But we're out. And what have we got? A stone or a bit of metal? Nope, that was a stone. Right, pinpointer. Hmm. Oh, that is it. Aha. We have a thing. Well, I think we're going to call that agricultural. But at least it's not aluminium. Not a lot of success for me in this field so far, but you know what? It's great to see so many metal detectorists out all doing what we all love. Trying to find some history. Well, here we go. This is field number seven. It's uh, been a potato field, I think. It's been ploughed, or maybe carrots. And it's been ploughed. And up at the top of the hill, there's a prehistoric settlement. So let's see if there's anything to be had. It's taken about 20 minutes, but we've got the first target in uh, field number seven. 
I wouldn't say it sounds amazing, to be honest. And I think possibly this has actually been a pea field. Not a potato field. It's getting louder. Not the biggest target in the world. Fix the camera a bit. Have we got our first coin? Got my doubts. Oh, there's that bit of... Oh no, it's a coin. Ha ha! Yes! Oh, I was just about to say that looks like a, a bit of stone. But it looks like a coin. Almost certainly Georgian. But are we going to get any detail or not? Um, not yet at least. But as ever, we'll dry it out. We'll give it the bendy thumb treatment. But at least we're off the mark. Doesn't sound like a great signal, so I'm guessing probably on its edge. Back to you in a second. It is indeed a coin, and it is indeed Georgian. But I thought probably George III, but as you will see, it's a little bit earlier. It's his grandfather, uh, George II. So sometime between 1727 and 1760. From the time of Bonnie Prince Charlie, the Jacobites, Culloden. Uh, the Battle of Culloden was 1746. And uh, his son, the Duke of Cumberland, did the dirty work. He led the British troops against the Jacobites and earned the nickname The Butcher. The Butcher Cumberland. So you'll see his face having faded in there, looking to the left-hand side. George I and George III both look right. And the reverse, I'm afraid, is toasty. Possibly there is a Britannia seated there. Possibly. But still, it's my first coin. It's taken a bit of effort. I think we're at about probably about 11am, 11 11.30, so it's taken me a bit of time to get my first coin, but at least we're off the mark, and hopefully more to come. And a half penny in the 1720s, well, it's probably going to get you two pints of beer. So I think we'll head swiftly to the beer tent for lunch, see if we can trade it in. A wee catch up with Martin, look at that for a lump of lead. Um, don't know if it's foldy, does it? Yeah, it looks like it's got a crease in it. So a great big ingot of lead. Who knows, could be any age, but he's also got himself a coin, which he's unsure yet who it could be. It's kind of half penny size, isn't it? Yeah, but looks, yeah, what side are you looking at? When you flip it over, it looks weird on the other side. Oh yeah, oh it's a Hibernia. It's an Irish issue of a half penny. You can see the harp of Ireland there. What have you got? What have you got? Um, let me see, that way. So I'll superimpose that on top, but that is an Irish issue. And, well, I don't know, I'm going to flip it over in a wee second and have a, have a look at the other side, but it could be a Queen Anne. But, maybe. maybe. So, see if you look it's going to take a wee bit more cleaning. Let me get back to you in a wee second once I've figured it out. There we are, we've given it a wee bit of a clean up. And I thought there was an outside chance it could have been a Queen Anne, but it ends in Rex, R-E-X, which is King. So it's Georgius. It's one of the Georges. It's either going to be George I or George III. I think it's probably going to be George the Third, Mr. Potato Head, because the striking looks reasonably good. The text's quite clear. I'll superimpose George the First and George the Third on top, but I think it's probably George the Third. But it is an Irish issue, 1760 to 1820. So it is a very interesting little coin, complete with the harp of Ireland. Well done, Martin. Nice little coin. Could well be a date on it as well, but we're going to have to do a bit more cleaning to find out. 
69, so let me think, when did he rule? Yeah, he ruled 1760 to 1820, so it would be 1769, it would be George the Third. So it is 1769, George the Third halfpenny. There's his lead, wee lump of lead, and then he's got himself one, two, three, three tomback type buttons, which are all Georgian as well. Not bad, Marty, not bad at all. Catching up with Pete, he's got, yep, looks like a button. Shank in the middle there. Shank, and he's got a thrupney bit, which is, is it either George the Sixth or no, it's no, not. It's not. Queen Elizabeth. It's Queen Elizabeth the Second. So a thruppence. Uh, give it a wee clean up and see if we can get a date on it. So it's a 1961. You can see the portcullis with the crown and chains. Three pence. And the late Queen Elizabeth II. So pre decimal. When was decimalisation, Pete? 1971. 1971. And then Pete has got this, <coughs> which is interesting. I think it's part of a buckle. But could it be part of a fibula? Hmm. It's a funny shape if it's a buckle, because it's normally they're symmetrical. There's a little hole there, so there's obviously been a pin going through it. My guess would probably be buckle, 1700s, possibly, but, well, it's a find. Well done, Pete. Double denarii, Pete, maybe, later. Possibly. Getting a fair few signals off this field. There's been quite a bit of lead. This is a very high 70. Don't think it's deep. It might be out. Or it might not be out. Nope, that's some pee. That, folks, is a bit of an ear tag. I think it is. Something along those lines. A quail. Junk. And this time, a very chirpy little 67. And we've got a little button. And it might be decorated. It is. It is. There's the shank snapped off. And it looks like it's just a little sort of dot decoration on it. But that's probably Georgian. Maybe Victorian, so sometime probably around about 1800, 1850, something like that. But, again, it's another wee find. And that is us. There's Marty in his sky blue. He's easy to spot in the fields. That's Sneaky Pete, just right there. And, uh, well, we've all got coinage. And the field is clearly, they're not masses of targets, but it's... Um, it's clearly not been detected before, or heavily detected, because you're getting all the buttons, the lead, uh, the bits of copper, aluminium and stuff, things that show you that it's not been detected before. So, uh, so we've got high hopes, but um, we're going to stop for lunch now. Apparently there's going to be a pizza truck, a fancy a wee pepperoni. So we all got a coinage. Thruppence for Pete. Nice uh, George III, Irish issue for Marty, and uh, maybe a George II or a Givillimus for me. So, let's go and get some lunch, boys. Welcome back to the fields of North Berwickshire. Is it North Berwickshire? Anyway, we're in the Scottish borders, and um, we're back at the Michael Hare Memorial Rally, also known as Detector Mania in the Scottish borders. Uh, obviously Marty and Pete have been here with me for the weekend. Simon has arrived this morning, but I didn't have my microphone set up, so I couldn't actually record them. Um, but uh, yeah, we're out. This is field number 16. There's three new fields today. Each of the fields is about 100 acres. As you can see, there's not a lot of people, so there is a lot of space. Um, so we'll see if we can find some interesting finds. As ever, if you're not already subscribed, then please hit the button. And, um, well, as confirmed yesterday, or as I suspected yesterday, there has been a Bronze Age axe head found. There's been a few silver milled. There's been a few hammered coins. Um, and I've met some fantastic people. 
very humbling to meet so many fans of the channel. So thank you all for coming up and saying hello. Thank you also to uh, to Gary who uh, from Lothian Relics who organises it, who gave myself and Marty and Pete a lovely hoodie each, which was fantastic. So that's keeping us extra warm on this slightly chilly morning. But there is a wee hint of sunshine up here and it's definitely less misty and less foggy than it was. So, um, well, let's go and see if we can find some treasures on Sunday at the Detector Mania Rally. Let's go. Here we go, Sunday, first target at Detector Mania. Field 16, it's a stubble field and it's not too bad digging. Definite button territory for first find of the day. Simon's here as well. He was on time, he was half an hour early, but still managed to be late. Is that something green in the hole, or is that a stone? Nope, that's a stone. Right, one more, and then we'll get the pinpointer. Oh, there's a stone there. Right, Let's see what happens. We're out. Good. Big stone. We're in here, and there we go. Something green. It's a thing. Let's give it a wee brush, see what that might be. Well, it's copper, copper alloy. And I'm going to go with good old tractor piece. But if you know, comment below. We're off the mark. Signal number two, about 20 minutes in and it sounds like a cracker. Yes, maybe a bit of a big target to be a coin. But, Georgian copper, silver, you never know. Well, at least it's shallow. Oh, we've got a coin. We've got a coin, folks, and it might be a spendable two pence. It's brown, which normally means it's cupronickel, which means usually it's George VI after that date. And it could be a spendable two pence, but it could be an old, an old pre-decimal halfpenny as well. Nope, we've got a two pence piece. There you go. Elizabeth II. Should get a date off it. Possibly. Maybe. Give it the old bendy thumb treatment. Now, nope, pretty toasted on that side, but she would be there. And there you go. A spendable two pence. Wonderful. I don't think I'll get much for that, but I'll try. And we've got a musket ball. It has been slightly clipped by my speed. It was a very deep target. It was very, very faint. And as I took about eight or six inches out of the soil, it started to sound a wee bit better. It was actually probably about 12 inches down. So well done to the Jethro program for finding that. I wasn't, um, I wasn't expecting it. So um, sometime probably 16 or 1700s. Nice, very good. It certainly isn't the busiest of fields in terms of targets. A few bits of lead, a few bits of copper. This one sounds a little bit erratic, to be honest. But at least it's not deep. So...
Well, whatever it is is small, and that's it there. Another tiny wee bit of lead. Equal. Another one worthy of filming. Sounds pretty decent actually. 87, 88. Right about there. Oh, easy digging as well. Gonna get the pinpointer because I can't quite make my mind up exactly where it is about there, maybe. Nope, it's actually there, so. And I've actually managed to pull my connection out my harness. Here we go. Right, make this a wee bit bigger. I went to the Regton stall and I completely forgot chatting away about all sorts of stuff. Completely forgot to get one of these little hand digging tools. So I'll need to wait for another time because I think he's packing up. Oh, we're out. Well, oh, we've got a buckle. There you go. Not quite a D buckle, but it's a buckle anyway. Quite a heavy one, so probably from a horse. I lost its pin. If indeed it even had a pin, it may have just been a... No, I think it has had a pin. So, off a horse. Probably a hundred, hundred and fifty. Maybe even a couple of hundred years old, but it's another find. Another digger. Again, sounds promising. Crisp, 82. Halfpenny territory. Ugh. Yeah, there it is there. Darn, it's a little bit of lead alloy, or pewter even. Ah, junk. And there we go. I was going to say Rodney Cook, but it's not. It's no. uh, Lothian Relics, Michael Hare, Detector Mania. And that is us, we're finished, we're packed. Look at that, leave only footprints. Taking a rubbish home with us. So it's been a great weekend, met lots of great people. Nice to have you boys. Yeah. Let's, let's hit the road. Good weekend all round. And thanks again for the uh, the fleeces, the hoodies, the Lothian relics. Right. Thank you, Gary, for the, uh, the merchandise. So I hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you all soon. Take care, and thanks for watching. Jenny bye. Jenny bye.